Why do others see you as a newbie designer? It could be the words you use, whether it's speaking English in France or calling football soccer anywhere outside the United States. There are fewer things that make you look like an outsider quicker than using the wrong language. If you want to be precise with your speech, you'll need to understand key terms and concepts. Expanding your vocabulary will help you become a better designer because when you can give things a name, they become more tangible, allowing you to master the principles and techniques of the field. So if you skip the expensive university design education but still want to sound like a professional, I'm going to break down seven areas that graphic and web designers need to be familiar with. Typography, color, composition, image editing, web, print, and design styles. Typography is the art of arranging type to make the written word readable and visually appealing. You need knowledge of typesetting, type design, and typefaces. Typesetting is the process of laying out text on a page. To do this well, pay attention to the point size, ensuring it is large enough to be legible, but not too large. You're looking to achieve an ideal line length because too many words on a line puts the reader's head on a swivel. Leading, known as line height to web designers, is the vertical space between each line of text. Tracking, the overall letter spacing, how far apart each character is from one another. And kerning is adjusting the space between a pair of characters or glyphs. You don't need to be able to design your own font to be a designer, but some knowledge of type design is helpful. Know the features of the typeface. Is it a serif font that can with small flex at the end of the strokes or a sans serif without serif or a decorative like black letter script or hand-drawn type dive into type anatomy to help you analyze faces but you should at least know about ligatures that combine two or more letters into a single glyph ascenders descenders and x height the height from the baseline of lowercase characters speaking of which what's the difference between a typeface and a font the overall design of the set is a typeface, for example, Helvetica Neue, but a particular width and weight and emphasis would be a font like Helvetica Neue Bold Condensed Italic. If you'd like to dive more into choosing fonts, I've got a video called How to Choose Fonts, which we'll link to in the description. Secondly, color. Understanding color theory is crucial to creating captivating designs that stir emotion and deliver your intended message. You should ensure that you're working in the correct color mode, CMYK for print and RGB for digital, and be familiar with HSB, hue, saturation, and brightness. Think of hue as how we would name the color, like green, orange, lilac, etc. Saturation, how intense it is. If you decrease saturation, you add white, these are tints. And brightness, how light it is. If you decrease brightness, you add black, these are shades. To go further, create your own palettes by learning about the relationships on the color wheel, like monochromatic, complementary, analogous, etc., and the interaction of color. The perceptual effect of the interplay of different colors when they are placed together in a composition. Joseph Alba's book is the Bible on this. If you want to take the next step, I also have a video on how to choose colors. Composition, how elements are arranged in a layout. Dragging things around at random is not the best approach. Adhering to design principles will produce a better result more quickly. At design school, they teach you the Gestalt principles of visual perception, originated in Germany in the early 20th century. Ideas like proximity, similarity, closure, continuation. But as a beginner, focus on hierarchy, prioritizing elements based on their importance to guide the viewer's attention. If you want to understand nine principles of layout, focal point, white space, hierarchy, grouping, scale, sequence, alignment, balance, and grids, and see examples of each, I've got a three-part video series on that too, because they are terms you should definitely know. The fourth area is image editing. As designers, we often work with images to enhance our layouts. These could be vector graphics, which are made of paths based on mathematical equations so that they can be scaled infinitely without loss of quality. Or they could be raster images, also known as bitmap, made up of pixels, like digital photographs, for example. The resolution, the number of pixels per unit area, affects image quality and file size to ensure you're working at the correct resolution for your use case. Editing can involve adjusting the appearance of an image, like color balance and contrast, retouching, stacking elements in layers and cropping, removing the unwanted parts to create the most pleasing composition. If you want to go further, have a look at my free crash courses in Photoshop and Illustrator. Web. Now, being a good web designer requires knowledge of how the web works. You don't need to become a web developer, 
but you do need to know how to communicate with web developers. Good luck with that. And have an awareness of what's possible on the web. Responsive design, designing websites to adapt seamlessly to various screen sizes and devices has been mandatory for years now. The digital design process usually involves preceding high fidelity visuals with wireframes, basic sketches which outline layout and structure. There's lots of acronyms in the world of web like UI, user interface, UX, user experience, CTA, call to action, a prominent element like a button which encourages the user to do something specific, and CSS, cas cascading style sheet, if I can get it right, the code that's responsible for the layout and styling of much of the web. If you want to learn web design, we have a free web design course playlist here on the channel. Our penultimate area is print. Now hold up if you're a digital designer, print remains an integral part of communications and at some point you're going to need to print something and communicate with a vendor or print designer. At the very least, be aware of trim lines where the media is going to be cut. Safe area, keeping key elements like text away from the edges so they don't get lost. And bleed, allowing your artwork to extend beyond the trim area to prevent small white borders showing through at the edges due to the slight irregularities that occur when the paper is chopped. After all this, you might end up with PMS, the Pantone Matching System, which is a standardized color library ensuring accurate reproduction. They produce these books, as well as fabric swatches for fashion and all kinds of other stuff. It's the industry standard. And if you're a graphic designer, then get familiar with different printing methods too. So at the very least, you know what's possible for your clients. Graphic design movements and styles. In any field, you need to know some history and keep abreast of trends. This is true if you're a fan of a sport, a style of music, or whatever industry you work in. It's very difficult to communicate with others without this knowledge, like being a basketball fan today, but never having heard of Michael Jordan. So this is gonna be a very quick tour, but here are some influential movements every designer should be aware of. Art Nouveau, an artistic style from the turn of the 20th century, characterized by organic forms and ornamental motifs inspired by nature. Bauhaus, originating from a German art school between the world wars, Bauhaus embraced simplicity, functionality, and geometric design. Swiss modernism followed in the post-war era, trying to bring order after the chaos. Its apologists advocated for the clean, grid-based typographic layouts which went on to dominate corporate communication for decades. Postmodernist graphic design was part of the wider philosophical and cultural movement known as postmodernism. In the latter part of the 20th century, it found prominence and was marked by eclecticism and irony featuring hand-drawn elements, irregular collages and a disregard for legibility. At the beginning of this millennium, skeuomorphism was the thing. Digital interfaces imitated the appearance of real-world objects to provide users with a sense of familiarity. Since then, the web has led to an explosion in trends which move at an ever faster pace, although true movements take longer to develop and become recognizable as such. There's a lot more. You can't learn every idea and term you'll ever need in one go. The purpose of this video is to highlight what you might not be aware of and point you in the right direction so that you can dive deeper into areas you need to strengthen. By developing your vocabulary, you'll not only avoid being considered an amateur, but also elevate your ability to communicate and implement ideas. Like learning any language, using it in context is how you get it to stick. So just have a go. Hopefully you're in a supportive environment where those around you can coach you as you progress. Of course, your creativity, storytelling, empathy, many other qualities going to making a great designer, but hopefully this video is a useful overview of the tangible technical areas. In the description, there are relevant links to things I've mentioned, including our core design skills program, which is probably the best one for you if you're drawn to this particular video. Until next time, happy designing.